Welcome in to Turner Gymnasium, everybody. My name is Tim LaDuca, and we have some ODAC women's basketball this afternoon for you. It's the home Hornets taking on Eastern Mennonite here in a big ODAC matchup. Lynchburg looking for their first win of 2023 going up against the EMU Royals, who are above 500 at this point of the season. But we're going to have a big stretch of ODAC games, so this is when these contests really start to count. It was a good one last time Lynchburg was on the hardwood. They took on Guilford, but it lost by one point to a uh, Guilford team with 11 wins now, and they made a record 15 three-pointers, the Hornets did, in that game. It's a, uh, it's, a game it's, a, it's a program record in a single game for the Hornets. Olivia Harris started the scoring and from here downtown. Some highlights she from that one. It was Olivia Harris 22. who led the way Macy for Macy Mullins made in her. that game. She had 22 points. Macy Mullins, she made four three-pointers. She actually made five three-pointers uh, in the previous game against NC Wesleyan before the one against Guilford. She made eight in a row between those two games. Ashley Vandergriff, she leads the team in three-point percentage this season. She made all four of her three-pointers in that loss to Guilford, but she kept them in the game there late. Jada Chambers as well. She had two big buckets. Maddie Nimmo, who you'll see in the starting lineup, she had two assists on those two buckets. So we're going to get ready for the national anthems here as we prepare for Lynchburg versus Eastern Mennonite. We'll be back for starting lineups in a little bit here on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. All right, the National Anthem has been performed and we're doing starting lineups here between Eastern Mennonite and the Lynchburg Hornets. It's going to be a good one. Lynchburg only two wins on the season, one and five in conference play, but looking for their first ODAC win of the season or of the, of the calendar year, excuse me, in 2023. And on the other side of the court, Eastern Mennonite looking for their third conference victory. We see the starters there for Eastern Mennonite. It's going to be Tiffany Carey at guard. Maya Hamlet at guard as well. Lila Glimp will be a forward. Bree Redfern, sophomore, is going to be playing guard. And Lauren Moore 
also playing forward for the Royals, led by Jenny Posey here in her fifth season. And for the Hornets, it's going to be the usual starting lineup. It's the same one that they ran out there uh, in the 83-82 game against Guilford. Livia Harris, she's kind of the, uh, the veteran leader on this team as a sophomore. She's starting at guard. Macy Mullins, it's been electric from beyond the arc this season. She's only a freshman, and she is in the starting lineup as well. Freshman guard Maddie Nimmo, she's from Maryland, and she's going to be in the lineup as well. She usually runs the point. She's a really crafty guard. It's a lot of fun to see play here. It's exciting things to come. Brooke Kaysen, also a freshman. She's getting a second start of her career here. And then rounding out the starting five is the outside hitter, Bree Spainauer. Oh, wait, that's volleyball. She's actually going to be playing forward today. Uh, Two-sport athlete here. Fantastic to see her play uh, both volleyball and women's basketball here at Lynchburg. She's been a treat so far. Okay, so we're moments away from tip-off here on Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. You see Jayla Davis and Anitra Thomas, the assistant coaches, getting ready as Allison Nichols addresses her team. Looking for win number three on the year for the Hornets. Eastern Men look, looking to go two games above 500. Here they've had a good season to begin the way. Began the year with a win over Penn State Altoona. Also took down Wilson. Uh, playing a lot of the Penn State schools as they beat Harrisburg by two points uh, in late November. That was a good win. Took down Regent. And their two conference wins so far are a two-point win over Hollins and a bigger win over Virginia Wesleyan. And the Hornets take the first tip. It's Maddie Nimmo. She's going to quickly hit the pull-up jumper from the mid-range baseline, and that's a quick two points for the freshman guard. Interesting to see the Hornets roll out the full court press here, looking to frustrate the Royals and make them work from the beginning. We'll see how Posey's team responds to that full court pressure. Moore kicks it out. Here's Glimpf. She knocks down the three pointer. So back and forth early here. This is Glimpth, she is, uh, that's her first three-pointer made of the season, actually. So unconventional to get that done there from Glimpth, but nevertheless. Kaysen, she misses the long three. She was not one of the Hornets to be on fire from deep last game. It was four threes, all coming from Olivia Harris. She had four. Macy Mullins, she had four, and Ashley Vandergrift, who's on the bench right now, probably going to be an early substitution. She had four as well. She made all four of the ones she took. Quick two points there from Maya Hamlet. She's the leading scorer for the Royals, nearly scoring 13 points a game for EMU this season. She's the leader, and she's only a sophomore, so a lot of young talent in this game is... No one older than a sophomore out there on the court right now for the Hornets. Macy Mullins lines up from three. There's another one for her. She's now made 11 three-pointers over the last two and just over three, just, just at three games now. So she's just been electric from beyond the arc, and she was a huge reason why the Hornets got out to a big start against Guilford and uh, almost won that game against a really, really uh, highly skilled Quakers team. Tied up here in the early going. Kicked out of bounds by Hamlet. But, so there's a turnover there from the Royals. But if you think about it, that was a good opportunity. And that's what you sacrifice when you run the full court press. Yeah, you can, you know, get the Royals to set up their offense a little later in the shot clock. Maybe cause a turnover. Uh, just cause a little disruption before they even cross the timeline but also it opens up the opportunity for some easy buckets in transition. Speaking of easy buckets, there's Spainauer from Kaysen. So Spainauer gets two. There's the four freshmen and the sophomore Harris out there sitting on an early two-point lead. Thanks for spending your Saturday afternoon with us here on LHSN. It's a privilege. Get you ready for the NFL games later on, but this is this is certainly the matinee to start the day. Spainauer pulls down the rebound for the Hornets. She's the leading uh, rebounder on the team for Lynchburg this season. Sarah Johnson also does a great job 
cleaning up on the glass, but she's been out the last couple of games. Whistle's blown off the ball. They're gonna call an offensive foul on Bree Redfern. That was an off ball foul, so costly turnover there for, or excuse me, that was a foul, offensive foul on uh, Bree Spainauer off the ball. So, but Bree makes the offensive foul, but we'll show you the quick two points she got earlier on to, to, to kind of null that. Looking for Hamlet baseline, but Kayla Sledger just checked in, picks that one off. She passes that to Mullins, but Mullins is gonna turn that one over on the traveling violation. Mullins probably asking Coach Nichols there, is that a travel? <laughs> Didn't feel like a travel. Just a little bit of happy feet getting ready to pull up from three. Tiffany Carey rims that one out. And nice footwork there by Mullins along the baseline, a little pirouette, and gets the outlet pass to Nimmo. Nimmo then finds Sledge, but Sledge isn't able to finish the close range bucket. EMU looking to work quickly up to court when they're not facing that full court press on missed buckets. But a foul on the ball there uh, from Olivia Harris is gonna stop playing, allow for EMU to bring in three substitutions. You got number 12, Savannah Crawford out there. Jada Jones checks in, as well as Trinity Washington. The pass is picked off by Spainauer, but she <laughs> steps out of bounds as she was trying to collect herself and go the other way. Darcy Ross is checking in here for the first time. Darcy Ross had a really good game against Guilford the other night. Didn't score too much, but it was all the other ways she filled up the stat sheet. Just four points in that game, but hauled in seven rebounds, dished out two assists, and also had two steals. Causing some havoc there. Alternative ways other than scoring the basketball. Because when you have the offensive prowess from beyond the arc, from players like Olivia Harris, players like Macy Mullins, other ways to impact the game as Macy Mullins picks one off. Long pass into traffic. Sledge goes up there and pulls it down. She's gonna reset things up top. Mullins turns it over. Washington the other way. Poked out of bounds by Nimmo. It's gonna stay here with the Royals. Looking at that turnover again. Washington just picks the pocket of Mullins, who is now subbing out of the game. But Nimmo does a good job on the other end of the floor to prevent the fast break points. Off the inbound play, it's a quick two for Savannah Crawford. So the Royals tie things back up. Nice little play on the set piece from underneath the rim. Jada Chambers, she just checked in. Sledge, she missed the last couple of games, but she's back in action here as we are approaching the midway point of the first quarter. Swung across, Jones has it. Washington will reset things. Hamlet found Jones quickly underneath. Loose balls picked up by Crawford who's got herself a quick four points now. Or excuse me, that was Karis Lucas. Darcy Ross to Terry, and that's a three-pointer. Kayla Terry drains the three-pointer. Terry wasn't one of those three players who was really hot from deep against Guilford, but on the season, she is shooting just nearly 40%. So with that three-pointer, she's probably up over 40. That was that was Terry's 18th three-pointer made of the season. As we're gonna have a timeout here, it's gonna bring us to the media timeout. Really quick, look at Darcy Ross to Terry. Terry from downtown and gives the Hornets the lead. It's been back and forth so far here in this one.
John Eccles joined the Lynchburg College community in 1986 as director of housing. As his famous beard grew, so too did his stature with the students he served on a daily basis. He seemed to be everywhere and rapidly became an integral part of campus life. He was asked to serve temporarily as Dean of Students in 1993 and soon earned the position on a permanent basis. In 2007, he became Vice President for Student Development, a position he held until his retirement in 2016. Simply put, John Eccles set the standard for student affairs professionals. He led the growth of Hornet Pride throughout the last two decades of his service through his direct and constant interaction with students, through his colorful sense of humor, through his visibility on campus, through the red chairs, the red chair blogs, and all the colorful emails to students. He created the annual Leadership Award Ceremony. In addition, John contributed his sense of humor, his calm demeanor, and his common Back inside Turner Gymnasium, Karis Lucas checks the ball in to Washington, and things are back underway here. Four minutes to go in the first quarter. Jones misses that one from three. 10-9 lead for the Hornets. Three balls been working. Some good backdoor cut there from Jada Chambers on the assist from Sledge. It's good movement there from the senior. One of the only seniors on the team is there's a loose ball. Sledge laid out for it. But as she gained possession, she was out of bounds, so. Almost forced a turnover there. It's going to stay with the Royals. But it will be a full reset on the shot clock. As you see, Jada Chambers there just knocked down that two points on the smart cut. It's good, good court awareness. And good job by Sledge. You know, turning from the free throw line and finding the cutter. Three pointer off the mark by Lucas, but cleaned up under the rim. It's Karis Lucas who did the little. Cleanup job. Sledge kicks it out to Nimmo. Nimmo from three. Yes, indeed. Took a little contact there. Got to be careful not to get called for the flop as that's an automatic technical now here in college basketball. Turnover from Jones. Darcy Ross, the first to get a hand on it. Nimmo, just after making the three pointer, tries to make the pass out to Chambers from underneath the rim. No good, it's gonna be big wave subs here for both teams. Four players onto the court here. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a mess there at the scores table, everyone coming in and out. The two subs for Lynchburg, however, Macy Mullins and Bree Spainauer replace Darcy Ross and Matty Nimmo. See who takes over the ball handling duties here with Nimmo off the court. Moore kicks it out. Mid-range, Jay misses everything. Offensive board, however, by Crawford. Ball swung around the perimeter. There's Hamlet. That one's off the front iron and rebounded by Sledge. Terry. Swish. Another three-pointer from Terry. She's two for two from beyond the arc. And as we said, she's a 40% shooter from downtown, so. Not, maybe not one of the usual suspects, but that one's gonna fall. We'll take another look at it here. There's no one guarding her. She's gonna make that wide open three pointer a little bit more than 40% of the time it seems. How about another wide open three for Terry? That one's just a little too short. We got a timeout called on the court here by Jenny Posey. And we'll take a quick little break. And we'll be back on LHSN in a second. At Lynchburg, we don't fear change. We embrace it in our students, on our campus, in our community, and around the world. We're building on our legacy of always moving forward. It's the same place with a new name. Welcome to the University of Lynchburg.
Welcome back. Two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Lynchburg versus EMU. The Hornets have a slight six point lead, but it's been back and forth so far. Into the corner, Lauren Moore way off target. Offensive rebound, Red Fearn. 20 second reset on the shot clock, so the Royals have a chance to reset things here. Hamlet heavily guarded past the three point line, kicked back out to Moore. Moore stepped out of bounds there. It's going to be the seventh turnover of the day so far for EMU already here in the first nine, eight and a half minutes of play. Ashley Vandergriff, she just checked in and this is her first three-pointer since going four for four against Guilford. Vandergriff leading the team in three-point percentage this season. She's shooting 44.7% from downtown. Speaking of shots from downtown, there's Lauren Moore. She gets her first three points of the afternoon. Kaysen. No one guarding her out there beyond the arc, but a little bit too firm that time, and Crawford hauls in the rebound. EMU's defense is soft around the three-point line at the moment, you know, kind of hanging off of the Hornets on offense. And it's allowing the Hornets to just step into uncontested three-pointers. And knowing this team, those are gonna really gonna start hurting the Royals if the Hornets keep getting these wide open shots. Thirty seconds to go here in the first quarter. Swung around. There's the defense past the three-point line. Washington on Mullins. Down into the post. It's Mullins looking to turn the corner on Washington. Kicked out Vandergriff. She's got five on the shot clock. That's stolen away. Jones coming the other way with the left hand. That's blocked away by Terry. <laughs> Terry says, not in my house. Washington heaves a three at the last second. That one's short, and the Hornets are going to take a three-point lead into the first intermission. Some good energy there from Terry, who's been the player of the game so far. She's got those two three-pointers and now a block as Jones was trying to make the transition fast break layup. Goes up on the left side. She's denied by the five-foot-four freshman from Powhatan, Virginia. So looking at these two teams, Lynchburg shooting it well from the floor, 53%, seven makes on 13 attempts. And ES EMU also shooting well. You know, it, it's 40% it's from the floor, but that hasn't been the issue so far. It's been the turnovers for the Royals. So they've turned it over seven times. Lynchburg matching that though with six turnovers of their own. From deep, Lynchburg shooting 50%. They were just above that clip against Guilford shooting 54% on the game. Jenny Posey in her fifth season addressing the team here. She's assisted by Kayla Searles, Kiana Childress, and Jim Logan. And we're gonna break the huddle here, get ready for the second quarter of action. Talking to Allison Nichols the day after that game against Guilford, you know, how soon did you realize that was, a, that was the record, 15 three-pointers made in the game program record? And Allison Nichols said, well, she knew she knew that they were going to set that record this season because in a, in a scrimmage earlier in the year against Patrick and Henry Community College, the Hornets knocked down 18 three-pointers. So she said, yeah, this, group, this group's got a chance to uh, do some pretty special things from downtown. And they're doing that so far in this one as they hold a three-point lead. Another block underneath. That's Kaysen this time. Three-pointer off the front iron but it's gonna be tipped in. Or excuse me, that's just gonna fall in for three. Karis Lucas, she's the leading scorer for the Royals in this game so far with eight. So now the Royals are a lot more tenacious on defense. The good close out there from Hamlet, but Harris is able to sneak through that defense and get the easy two at the rim but a lot, a lot more intensity here from the Royals closing out 
as the ball swung around the perimeter by the Hornets because you just got to get a hand in the face of these shooters. Hornets have already taken way too many wide open three pointers. And as we said, making them pay as they're making half of them. Here's Terry, another good play on the defensive end. Just steals it away from Lucas. Terry tries to do it all herself, going coast to coast. Misses the layup. Rebound by Washington. Washington kicks it out. Hamlet has trouble. It's Kaysen with the steal. That's the third or fourth turnover there in the far corner from EMU. They get the ball down to the baseline, even if it's in the hands of their best scorer. The Hornet defense is just doing a good job of collapsing. You'll get a little double team in the corner, enforcing the turnover. Kaysen drives in. Left-handed hook shot. No good. So Washington didn't start this game, the freshman from Culpeper, Virginia, but she's been doing the ball handling duties up the court so far. And we haven't really seen too much of the full court pressure since early on in this one. Rebound by Spainauer, looking to get out in transition off of the miss. Kicked out to Kaysen, her three pointer is good. Brooke Kaysen, only her fourth three-pointer made of the season, but when you're not defended, you're going to be able to knock it down pretty easily from beyond the arc. Make that five threes in the game now for the Hornets. Could, could they be on pace to set another record? Substitutions here for both teams. Starting point guard back in for Lynchburg, it's Maddie Nimmo. One of the substitutions back in was a starter for EMU, Bree Redfern. Redfern is a sophomore from Fairfax, Virginia, standing in at 5'8". She gets a hand on that one. Good job getting a hand in the passing lane to disrupt the Hornet offense. Trying to find Spainauer in the low post, and that's poked away. Sledge is going to come back in. Kayla Sledge, she's a five foot 10 freshman. She's been a lot of fun to watch play, plays with a lot of energy. And she's a nice kid, you know, off the court as well. Mullins, pump fake and drives. No good on the layup. Lauren Moore with the assist. The other way, Washington had that one poked away. Block for Spainauer, but 20 seconds on the shot clock now, and Washington's going to set up the offense. Washington looking to find Hamlet in the post, but Nimmo just gets around that one and gets another steal. There's another turnover there in that far corner in front of the Hornets bench. It's just been the Bermuda Triangle for EMU so far. Tried to stay in from Harris. She couldn't corral it. Tiffany Carey checking back in. She was in the starting five. Carey averaging just three points a game. As a senior for EMU. Hamlet from the free throw line kicks it out. Redfern, nothing there. And Spainauer hauls in another board. We'll check in on Bree. Three rebounds so far for the freshman. Entrance pass to Sledge. Sledge turn around. She's going to be fouled there by Moore, and we're going to see our first free throws of the afternoon. Take a look at it again. It's Nimmo. She finds Sledge, and yeah, Sledge as she's going up. Oh, some contact on the forearm there. We'll get to see our first shots from the charity stripe of the afternoon. Sledge sinks the first. 66% free throw shooter this year. Lynchburg has a team just around that mark, 67.9%. She connects on both of them. It's 
So here's Carey now, reassumes the point guard duties, but she's hounded by Nimmo. Now loose ball on the floor. Spainauer's down there. Spainauer and Carey. <laughs> the skirmish on the court. There's also glimpse down there. You see some hounding defense there poked away. Spain hours first to jump on it. But the possession arrow favors the Hornets. So Spain hour is rewarded for the effort there with possession. Sledge from the top of the key. She comes in, shoot again, and she'll be fouled once more by Redfern. So Sledge going back to the line for two. Darcy Ross is going to check back in. And Savannah Crawford also will join Ross on the court. Sledge prepares to take her two. Savannah Crawford just checked in. She's got three boards on the day so far already as Sledge makes the first and two points. She scored very quickly when she checked into this game. Sledge looking to push it to a nine point lead and she does. The Hornets get a stop here and convert on the other end. It'll be the afternoon's first double digit lead of the day. Kicked out to the corner, Moore. Moore finds a cutting, Crawford, and Crawford nicely finished with the left hand. Good off-ball movement there, and good job for Moore. Moore had been shooting from that corner. She's made one of three so far from beyond the arc, but this time decides to acquiesce to Moore. As we will go to the media timeout here on Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Hornets lead 27 to 20. Back after the media timeout here in the second quarter. The two teams regroup onto the court. Back onto the court for Lynchburg, you got Olivia Harris, Maddie Nimmo, Jada Chambers, Darcy Ross, and Kayla Sledge. Starting five, or excuse the five on the court now for the Royals. You got Crawford, you got Carey with the point guard duties. Moore's down there, the leading scorer on the season. Hamlet, she gets the ball, and also Lila Glimpf. Cross-court pass, here's Moore. Can't connect, offensive rebound, Glim finishes on the putback. The first second chance points for EMU on the afternoon. Down by five, Nimmo drives and kicks, Harris pump fake in the corner, nearly poked away by Hamlet. Chambers driving in. Well defended there by Moore. Jada Chambers can't connect on the layup. See the post moves here by Glimpf. Can't get the hook shot around. Defended there by Darcy Ross. Ross kicks it out. Wide open from the free throw line, Sledge. A little too firm, but soaring in to get the rebound was Chambers. That's an unfortunate turnover there for Chambers as she gets called for the travel. She just tripped over the feet of the defender as she went up to grab it. We'll see it again. There's Sledge's shot. And yeah, nothing you can really do about that for Chambers. That's a, it's a painful turnover. 
We'll excuse that one for her. She just tripped over the feet as she came down to the ground. Five point lead for the Hornets. Looking to cut into that lead are the Royals. Jada Jones. Washington's back out there. Takes over the point guard duties for Tiffany Carey. Carey from the corner. No good. Another offensive board for Glimp. And there's another offensive board put back. As the Royals have brought it back in within one possession. It was a nine point lead at one point just before the media timeout for Lynchburg. Since then, EMU is how the Hornets scoreless. Offensive board this time on another end. Chambers could drive to the rim. Hornets pushed back out to a two possession lead. Can't connect there from, from Jones. And so shooters back onto the court for Lynchburg. Of course, Macy Mullins. But can't forget about Kayla Terry. She's made two of her three-pointers so far. Spainauer's out there as well. And Brooke Kasich. Chambers has been getting some big minutes. She was in there late against Guilford, and she had two big layups uh, in transition that kept the Hornets in the game. Smolens can't connect from deep. But it's good to see the senior out there. Her veteran leadership is probably very influential for this young team because besides Chambers out there on the court right now, you got all freshmen. How about Carey? She's a senior. And she's able to get past the senior defender, Chambers, for two. Back to a three-point lead. Kaysen thought about the three. Gets past the closeout def defender. And another offensive board here for Chambers. Terry for three. There it is. Three for three for Terry from three. She's got nine points now. It's Terry, the first player to come off the bench for the Hornets has been instrumental so far. Nifty little finish there from Washington. The floater for two. Spainauer, defended by Glimpf. Chambers surveys, finds Mullins. Spainauer was cutting, but that's stolen away by Glimpf there. Now maybe pushing in transition is EMU. They decide to pull it back out and start the offense up. Three pointers off the mark. Spainauer hauls in another rebound, going up and over. Glimp there. Spainauer using all 5'10 of her frame out of rural Hall, North Carolina, to pull down that rebound. Minute 16 to go here in the first half as the Hornets hold a four point lead. The turnovers have slowed down for both sides. Just three turnovers in the third, in the second quarter here for Lynchburg and four for EMU. So compared to the seven and six for both sides respectively in the first quarter, uh, things have been tightened up a little bit. Sometimes you just gotta get those jitters out in the first quarter. And we've seen a good half of basketball here so far. And the story of course, 50% from three for Lynchburg. They're making half of their threes and a big factor in that is Caitlin Terry, who is three for four from downtown with a team and game high nine points. On the other side, Karis Lucas has eight. She came off the bench and she's been, she's two for two from, from the floor. As we're talking about Terry, there's one of her three pointers. Just about a minute to go here on Wayne Profit Court in the first half. Pull up jumper from the free throw line. Easy money for Olivia Harris. Harris with four points so far on this one. Drive in, baseline J off the side of the backboard. Hauled in. It's the first rebound for Terry, who also has a block. No look pass from Harris. That's poked away. It was Lucas who poked it away. Nice job getting a hand on that no look pass. 30 seconds to go, 10 second differential between the shot and game clock. As the Royals look to get things close. Driving layup is good from Hamlet. 
Hamlet averages 13 points on the, on the season. She's only got four here in the first half. Look for her to get hot here. Hornets can hold for last possession. 10 seconds on the clock. Entrance pass down low. Five seconds. It's Mullins. Still have a little bit of time. Now shot's got to go up. And Mullins wasn't aware of the time as she hoists that one. She was calling a play, actually, as time ran out in the first half. That'll do it here in the first half of action here between Lynchburg and EMU. Score at the break, 34 to 30. We'll take a break. The teams will head to the locker rooms. We'll be back in a couple of minutes for some halftime statistics. But don't go anywhere here on Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. My name is Brittany Coleman. I graduated in 2014 and I have a major in chemistry and a minor in secondary education. And I'm currently teaching chemistry and seventh grade science at a local combined school. Being able to have access to your professors pretty much any time they're in their office is really helpful, especially in difficult science subjects. I love that I am able to teach a difficult subject to students who typically aren't going to perceive it as enjoyable. Um, I'm able to present it in an interesting way because I was presented this information in an interesting way. It's nice for me to be able to mirror what it was that influenced me to be able to teach. My name is Jen Hyde. Um, I graduated in 2018 and I got my major in philosophy, political science and I minored in human services. And uh, career-wise, right now I work at a residential treatment center for um, juveniles with sexually reactive behaviors. I would say the biggest advantage is definitely um, that it is a small campus. You know, you get to um, have that one-on-one -on -one with your professors. They're willing to help you out. They're going to get to know you more than just a student that they're teaching. You know, they really invest into your lives. Definitely use every resource that you can kind of get at Lynchburg. Um, there is tons of mentors within the professors, the faculty, the staff here, your peers that are here. You have so many options that you can take. There's so many classes, you know, even if it's not within your major, if there's a class you're interested in, take it. Um, kind of explore your options because Lynchburg does have such a wide variety of different things that you can do. Um, you know, be involved, become a well-rounded individual um, because Lynchburg sets up the support to where you can do that here. John Eccles joined the Lynchburg College community in 1986 as director of housing. As his famous beard grew, so too did his stature with the students he served on a daily basis. He seemed to be everywhere and rapidly became an integral part of campus life. He was asked to serve temporarily as dean of students in 1993 and soon earned the position on a permanent basis. In 2007, he became vice president for student development, a position he held until his retirement in 2016. Simply put, John Eccles set the standard for student affairs professionals. He led the growth of Hornet Pride throughout the last two decades of his service through his direct and constant interaction with students, through his colorful sense of humor, through his visibility on campus, through the red chairs, the red chair blogs, and all the colorful emails to students. He created the annual Leadership Award Ceremony. In addition, John contributed his sense of humor, his calm demeanor, and his common sense approach to the leadership of the college at the highest levels of administration. He even donned a hard hat and work boots to supervise the construction of the Drysdale Student Center. His summer talks to new students, although wrapped in humor, were serious as he spoke his mantra, involvement is not an option, it is an expectation. He lived that ideal through his own involvement in student life, as the head cheerleader at Hornet Athletic Contest, and as a friendly and approachable face for generations of students. His legacy is a treasure for the students whose lives he impacted and a challenge for the entire university community to emulate. I was looking for a school that could provide me with the athletics, academics to pursue my career a wind symphony to pursue my passion for music, 
and really have a nice uh, general atmosphere. The professors here are really unique. They, their background and their passion for teaching. It's really a place where you can explore. Uh, it, Lynchburg gives you the opportunity to fail, but also get back up in that period of time and, and learn from your mistakes. I can make these mistakes within the school environment, but also uh, with the support of other friends and be ready for the real world when you graduate. Lynchburg really stood out for me just because of the way it treated its students. They really do make an effort here. And I've learned that over my four years is that they actually do try to listen to what the student body wants. And they try to act on that. They don't really just give you a piece of paper here to then go off and do your own thing. They actually prepare you to like work with different populations, which is what the world is all about. It's just working with people that are different than you. They genuinely care that everyone has the ability to go off into the world and make a difference with whatever they like. Um, for me, that's just being basically in a room with someone helping them achieve their first goal of, I don't know, doing a pull-up. I actually do believe they want you to do the best you can to change someone's life for the better. You can be anyone here, which I think is really cool, but regardless of who you are here, they will make sure you don't fall through the cracks, which is awesome. I have realized that I've never felt lost here. I will not regret ever coming here, that's for sure. Um, so I'm very glad that I came here. Yeah, it's actually pretty awesome. Thomas Gibson Hobbs graduated from Virginia Christian College in 1904 as a member of its first graduating class. After earning a law degree from the University of Virginia, he settled in Lynchburg and began a highly successful career as an attorney. In January of 1915, he was invited to attend a meeting of the College Board of Trustees, during which the possibility of closing the college due to financial concerns was to be considered. Mr. Hobbs spoke eloquently of the need to fight for the college's existence, and the board decided to continue operating the institution. He was asked to serve on the board at that meeting and served as the chairman of the board of trustees from 1918 until his tragic death in 1942. Mr. Hobbs was a guiding light as the college changed its name to Lynchburg College and moved toward becoming an accredited liberal arts institution. His relationships with the economic power structure of the city played a critical role as the young college struggled financially through the depths of the Great Depression. His belief in Josephus Hopwood's vision of the college never wavered, as reflected in his message to the student body in the late 1930s. Lynchburg College, with continued wise leadership, is just on the threshold of development into an institution which will, in still larger measure, build sound leadership in church and school and state a leadership which will look for its reward in the consciousness of service rendered and a task well done. Upon his death in 1942, the Board of Trustees unanimously adopted a resolution of appreciation which named Mr. Hobbs as, quote, the college's greatest leader, unquote. Halftime in the Hill City here on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. I'm Tim LaDuca, and we have a good one here brewing as Lynchburg leads visiting Eastern Mennonite 34 to 30, four point lead at the break. Looking at how these two teams stack up so far in this one, closely contested in the points column. The four point lead, as we mentioned, and the field goal percentages for both teams looking pretty good as well. Lynchburg shooting lights out from beyond the arc as we've just kind of come to expect at this point. 50% from downtown, kind of on par for the last couple of games. Eastern Mennonite out rebounding the Hornets, and then there it is, the big one turnovers. 11 for Eastern Mennonite, 9 for Lynchburg. That's why this game low scoring despite the, uh, the high field goal percentage from both sides. So we'll see if EMU can clean it up 
with ball security and see if Lynchburg can keep shooting it lights out from downtown. See how that one, how that's gonna affect the rest of the game. Kayla Terry is the leading scorer for either side so far. She's got nine on the day. On the other side of the court, it's Karis Lucas. She's got eight. That one was Hamlet. She goes in for the easy two. She's got four points on the day, and she's the leading scorer for EMU at 13 a game. Chambers, she's had some big minutes so far. And as we mentioned, Terry, she's made three deep balls. That was one of them. Chambers, how about four for the senior? Offensive board, that's been a little outlet for Glimpf and the Royals so far as getting those boards and cleaning up the glass and getting second chance opportunities. Crawford, she's put up some big minutes too. She's got four points and she's also hauled in three rebounds. Olivia Harris, quiet so far. She's got four and will end the reel, of course, with Terry. <laughs> she's just a little ball of energy there as she leads the team with nine points on three or four shooting from downtown. Four and a half to go till we restart things in the Hill City. A reminder, you're watching Lynchburg Hornet Sports Network, and you're going to be you're going to want to be right here when things get back started for the second half. See you then. Thing that I've taken from Westover is probably my interactions with faculty. I started working with Dr. Fryer. He's always available for help and he makes sure that I get to do the experiments and not just be there while he does them. I didn't want to limit myself when I came here to just taking the prereqs for med school. I wanted to get a full well-rounded education and I definitely found that in the Westover program. It's given me the opportunity to keep playing soccer at a competitive level, um, but also it's given me the ability to be a student and to pursue other activities such as EMS. hundred percent do Westover because it's not something they're going to regret and it's going to be a lot of work, but so is everything else. It's just going to help build their education that they've already had and make them a better person for it. A lot of people go to the universities to find something to be a part of while getting their education. And when you come here, Lynchburg is that something, it becomes a family. It's what the school's really good at doing. My name is Marlene Castaños. I, was, I graduated in 2009. Um, I was a communication major. I am a digital producer now for the Martin Agency. So we have a broad of amazing clients from Geico to Land Lakes to Oreo. Um, so we get to create amazing content, all those funny Geico commercials that you see. And as a digital producer, I get to create amazing content for digital. I was very highly involved here. Um, I was president of my class while I was here. I was president of the Hispanic Society. I joined um, a sorority when I was here. I had like two jobs. Um, so having a sense of managing my time, um, it kind of pushed me to be better at my job right now. Just knowing that you had someone on your corner was really important and they really took the time to really invest in their students. I felt like I had a, a cheerleading squad behind me at every single point. Um, they were the ones that encouraged me to look for those opportunities to you know, push myself to be better. So it's definitely truly an amazing place. Um, I brag about this place all the time. So if anyone gets lucky enough to be part of this community, I, it's life changing. Welcome back from halftime, folks. It's a good one here. It's Lynchburg leads EMU and ODAC women's basketball action 34 to 30. 
Oh yeah, that's right. That's me, Tim LaDuca on the mic. Director of digital media here working alongside my buddy Sam Rice, doing everything over there. Got Charlie on the camera and Brian also working from Lynchburg track and field, thanks to them. 53 degrees about in Lynchburg right now. It's actually a pretty nice day, but guess where it's even nicer? 77 degrees right now in Miami, Florida, where Lynchburg Swimming's having a blast at their annual training trip. The Hornets men and women's side head down to Florida each year to get some uh, get some good work in. They're doing two a days right now at Florida International and also doing some training out on the beach when they're not relaxing out in the sun and building sandcastles and whatnot. Good group of kids there. We're excited to have them back home, though. Starting January 14th, they're going to have a meet against Milligan and Roanoke at Liberty University Natatorium. It's their home site for their swim meets and uh, Milligan, the NAIA school, and then big conference for Roanoke will be here on uh, Saturday, January 14th at noon. Then it's going to be a code red meet for the Hornets as they take on Southern Virginia on Saturday, the 28th. So you're going to be want to, you're going to want to be there to see those two talented group of swimmers in action at home. As the action returns here, it's Moore. Lauren Moore knocks down her first three-pointer. It's a one-point lead now <laughs> as we try to wake you back up after halftime. That'll, that'll light a fire. The three ball from downtown. Harris drives in, and she's fouled. She's now poised to take the fifth and sixth free throws of the afternoon for either team as Lynchburg has been, done a good job on defense not fouling EMU, and the Royals haven't gone to the line yet. Sledge is the only other player to take free throws so far, and she was four for four as Harris connects on that one. Something we expect out of Harris, though, as the sophomore and the leader on this team, frankly, is shooting 80.8% on the season. She knocks down both to re-extend the lead to three. Full court press again. It's the same way we saw the Hornets start out the first quarter of the game. Second chance opportunity from Hamlet. There's her six points. We said she was a little bit under the radar in the first half. She comes out and gets a quick bucket. She's the leading scorer for the Royals. Looking around at the free throw percentages as well, too. Something you expect from a team that's so lights out from the three-point line. Also really good from, from, the, uh, from the charity stripe. Macy Mullins shooting 87%. She's only missed three free throws on the year. And Ashley Vandergriff, another good three-point shooter. Dead eye from downtown. She's only missed one. Bree Spainauer hits the corner of the backboard there on the long three as the Royals look to take a lead. It's more. She's already made one. That one's just collected on the off on the defensive board though by Harris. Harris pushing the pace. Thrown into the corner. Nimmo was the intended target. Just out of her reach though. So trying to inbound here against the zone as they quickly trap in the corner. And it creates a steal there. Harris just pulled that one out of the air. Finds Spainauer. Spainauer now gets a trip to the line. Almost had the end one there. She's fouled by Bree Redfern. One substitution apiece here. Karis Lucas comes in. She's a freshman for EMU. And Jada Chambers back out there, the senior. Spainauer on the season. 66% from the free throw line. She's getting to the line just about three times a game. She connects both of them there. The trap on the full court press just needs to be a little bit quicker for Lynchburg to really lock in the EMU defender uh, offensive players uh, and quickly breaking out of it is Hamlet and the Royals and they're down by one now some heavy contact there no call as Nimmo dribbles this one off her foot and Lucas is just going to pick it up again in transition missed this time offensive board and then a foul Foul as Tiffany Carey was going to try to get the offensive rebound. Yeah. 
six second chance points for EMU in this one. And they've also totaled eight offensive rebounds. Compare that to just the four for Lynchburg. Is it's actually gonna be Jada Chambers now. She's out, she's on a knee just around mid court. Didn't see what happened. Allison Nichols is out there to check on her. Coach is just gonna ask Chambers what's going on. And while we try to settle out what's going on here, we're going to take a little bit of a break. We'll be back on LHSN in a moment. Jade Chambers walks off under her own power, and she's going to check out the trainers, the athletic trainers for Lynchburg. Great team, frankly, of heroes we have here at Lynchburg in the athletic part, athletic department. Brittany Smith, she's the athletic trainer responsible for the women's basketball team. Hails from upstate New York, just like me. Five eight five represent. Mullins tries to make a pass inside the sledge. Now the ball is still loose. And an interesting call for the jump ball as <laughs> Sledge had it <laughs> wedged between her knees. I guess that counts as having possession of it. <laughs> but <laughs> the jump ball is called and it'll stay with the Hornets underneath. <laughs> Look like a rugby scrum there. Mullins on the inbound off the front iron. That's the fifth offensive board for Lynchburg as Bree Spainauer pulls it in. She collects her fifth rebound. She also has four points. Harris, quick release. Another offensive board. Now Mullins will try. The three-pointer's good. Maisie Mullins makes EMU pay after two offensive rebounds from Bree Spainauer. She sinks the deep ball. If Lynchburg's shooting 50% from three, if you give them multiple opportunities from down, downtown in a possession, odds are they're just gonna make one of them as they're shooting 50%. As this game is now all of a sudden gone into fast forward as both teams making fast break layups on either end. Uh, Lynchburg still instituting that full court press. Locked up there. That was Nimmo and Glimpf. The Hornets possess a four point lead. Inbound underneath the basket. Glimp swings it up top to Moore. Moore started the second half here with a three pointer. She's made two so far. Driving in, splitting the defense, but just can't finish. She slid right between Sledge and Spainauer. It was all alone under the rim and couldn't finish. Kick out to Mullins. Can she get hot? Misses off the front iron. Second time she's missed from that exact spot on the rim and from the floor here early on in the third quarter. Lucas sinks it. Back to one. Three pointers now starting to fall for EMU. It's a good way to try to get back into a game here. On the pick and roll, Spainauer shot fake, she's blocked. Lucas Ormore got a hand on it. You can get half of a block in volleyball. Spainauer knows that, but you can't get half of a block in basketball. So we're going to have to decide who deserved that one more. Is it Moore or Lucas to get the steal, uh, get the block? The pace really increased here as Spainauer finds Harris on the fast break. Lynchburg. Has not conceded the lead yet, but EMU refusing to go away. And with the speed of this game right now, I would assume these trends to continue. It's the next stoppage will most likely bring us to the media timeout. 
give these two teams a chance to talk things over, but no, nope, still 12 seconds before five minutes, so that's no, but Moore, when Moore released that one, she knew right away that it was, uh, that was not going to connect. Because the substitutions there, wave subs for both sides, looks like a subway platform as people coming in and out. <laughs> it's just a mess. Mind the gap. As Olivia Harris creates a gap in the defense there, trying to free herself up for the shot. But she gets the pseudo assist on the Darcy Ross put back layup. As Lynchburg now starting to really clean up the offensive boards. It's the fourth offensive rebound of the quarter, and we're only five minutes into the resumption of play. Washington guarded by Nimmo. Washington, the spin move, the finish. Another floater right in front of the rim. Washington's been having success there from just inches in front of the rim and avoiding using anything to assist. You know, not, not coming off the backboard at all. Terry, can she stay hot? She misses. Good box out there from Redfern. She boxed out Darcy Ross, who had just gotten the offensive putback on this possession before. 15 seconds on the shot clock. The driving floater again from Washington. She's having a day. Trinity Washington now with six points. She's been floating him in from the paint. Nimmo drives in, left-handed layup, count it. And the foul. Maddie Nimmo going to the line for one. Nimmo finished that one, the ball far from her body. We're gonna try to take a look at this one again. Excuse me, that was Macy Mullen. She splashes the three. And there is Hamlet. We're looking for her to heat back up. So we're taking a immediate timeout, but we're gonna, we're going to uh, watch the rest of these replays and take a little bit of a break here on Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Right before we left, Maddie Nimmo finished with the nice left-handed layup through traffic, drawing the contact, and she's gonna take a free throw now, try to convert the old-fashioned three-point play. Olivia Harris, she knocked down two free throws earlier here in the second half, and she had been having kind of a slower game offensively, but since those two free throws fell, she's catapulted herself to the leading scorer for Lynchburg. She's got 10. So sometimes seeing that ball go through the bucket with an easy free throw really can ignite an offensive player as Nimmo is hoping that's going to be the case. She's got seven points now on the day. Knocked down a three-pointer as well. So Harris, the only player in double figures for Lynchburg, but it's Karis Lucas who came off the bench, and then Maya Hamlet, who is EMU's leading scorer, both in double figures for the Royals. Long rebound, gets a head start for Harris, who is not going to find anything on the fast break, but finds Kaysen instead, drains the three. Brooke Kaysen, she started this game and she also started against Guilford, getting on the board here in a big way. Kaysen, that's her second triple of the afternoon. Kicked, not allowed to do that. 
So play will be whistled dead and we will resume underneath the basket with Trinity Washington who's had a couple of finesse shots. Soft touch under the rim with the floater. Now from the longest part of the court, from beyond the three point line, we got a jump ball here. Darcy Ross and the leading scorer currently for the Royals, Karis Lucas, tied up. The fourth jump ball of the afternoon. Allison Nichols is, is waving down the referees, trying to get their attention. She wants, she wants to ask a question. If you look at her, she actually just recently looked down at her feet to make sure she was inside the coaching box. Because last game, uh, a rare call you, you almost never see. Nichols got called for the, uh, she got called for the, uh, being out of the coaching box. She only got a warning, but it was just a funny moment. And it's also interesting to see that Nichols now is being very careful not to cross the coaching box restrictions at all. She's gonna send Macy Mullins back into the game here. So that's the fifth foul now from EMU. It's gonna send Case into the line. She's made two from downtown, now looking to make two from the stripe. Kaysen's out there right now with Darcy Ross, Macy Mullins, Kayla Terry, who's made three three-pointers, and Olivia Harris, who's the leading scorer right now for the Hornets. There's the first miss of the day from the free throw line for the Hornets. They're having a good day right now from the free throw line, 10 of 11. Gives Lynchburg an eight point lead. The biggest lead of the afternoon was nine. Here's another runner, just short, hauled in by Darcy Ross. Harris is gonna push the pace again. I've enjoyed watching Lynchburg, you know, not even even, even off of makes, they've been pushing the ball up the court, looking to just play fast. And when you have an offense that can shoot it, lights out from downtown. I thought I was leading and setting up Kaysen for a big moment there. But as, when you have a team that can shoot really well from downtown, if you can run and gun and get up the court quick, you're gonna find a lot of open shooters in the perimeter as the defense just tries to get back. Not really concerned of who they're marking, they're just, they're just trying to get back across half court after their offensive possession is set up on D. Player can sneak through, get lost in the transition and knock down a three pointer. So that's what happened there is Olivia Harris pushed the ball up the court and Kaysen was in the far corner. Cross court pass. Moore into the corner. Lucas for three. No good, offensive rebound. Back out to Lucas, she'll try it again. Off the back iron, another offensive rebound, Glimp. Finds a driving more and more is blocked by Terry. Terry, number two on her second block from the freshman number 11. Mismatch down low, or not really mismatch, they're actually Glimpf and Spainauer both stand at five foot 10, but Spainauer was emphatically calling for the ball in the post. Olivia Harris tried to find her and it was just tipped. That was K Tiffany Carey driving to the lane and Livy Harris tried to, or excuse me, Brooke Kaysen tried to block the shot, just got a little bit of an arm. And EMU now will attempt their first free throws of the afternoon. If you're trying to make a comeback, this is exactly the place you want to be. Getting your cheese and lettuce from the free throw line. Nothing like scoring when the clock's not on. We have a minute and 20 to play here in the third quarter. And Carey converts on both. Substitution here. We're gonna get to see Bree Redfern back in, subbing in for Lucas. Karis Lucas just needs a little bit of a breather. She's four for nine from the floor so far. Try three of five from downtown, so a little taste of their own medicine that the Hornets are getting both from the three-point shooting from Lucas and now some full court pressure. 
We'll see how they can break it. Harris along the baseline. Knocked out of bounds. Royals ball. Harris can sh score like no other from beyond the arc, obviously, but it's so much fun when she's able to get into a little bit of space met by the defense at the rim, the up and under. You know, the pump fake in the air almost was able to make that finish there. Nifty play. Hamlet tries one from three. Offensive rebound. Reset here with 20 on the shot clock. Driving in and fouled. So Carey, who just made two of her free throws at the line, is going to get a second chance here as something we didn't see at all in the first half. EMU from the free throw line. And Carey's going to get a chance to do it again as she tried to split the defenders, Harris and Spainauer. Harris is going to get whistled for her second foul of the afternoon. Under a minute to play here on Wayne Profit Court. Carey cashes in. Tiffany, not far away, grew up in Bedford, Virginia, not far from the campus of University of Lynchburg. Went to Jefferson Forest High School. And so, you know, a little homecoming game for Carey here in the Hill City. Just, just almost, not, not fully. Kaysen tries one from way downtown. Yes, sir. Kaysen for three. Twenty seconds now. Royals trying to score here and prevent things from getting to a ten-point lead. Ten seconds to go here in the third quarter. Can the Hornets extend it to a double-digit lead for the first time? Spainauer drives in. Is that a shot or a pass? Kind of looking like Spainauer wanted the foul. Hamlet, she goes up and she's fouled late at the buzzer. We're going to have to put some time back on the clock as the foul from Mullins on Hamlet came with probably two seconds on the clock. That's what our referees, Michael Walters, Grace Horner, and Lynn Cron are talking about. Yeah, because you can see well before the scoreboard lights on the, uh, on the backboard turned red, uh, Hamlet was fouled by Mullins. So they're trying to work on that right now. They've put 0.5 seconds onto the clock. So what does that mean? That means if um, Hamlet is able to make the first and then misses the second, there's still more than enough time for EMU to get an offensive board and put it back up because really need only about 0.3 seconds to catch and shoot. So even less to get the tip in. And considering we have seen 12 offensive rebounds from EMU so far in this one, not out of the realm of possibilities at all. But it's only the third quarter, so don't need to do anything drastic. Hamlet sinks the, sinks the first. And as we said, 0.5 seconds on the clock. Cashes in both. So now you got time to catch and shoot, but you're going to see full court pressure here from EMU. Macy Mullins not going to try it at all. And we'll go into the fourth quarter. Lynchburg holding a six point lead here on the Lynchburg Hornet Sports Network.
Bree Spainauer. She's got four points for the Hornets, but seven rebounds on the day. She's been a big part of Lynchburg's domination so far. As Lynchburg is not out rebounding EMU. EMU has a four rebound margin over the Hornets and it's a big part to do with their 12 offensive boards by the Royals. It's really been the reason they've been able to stay in this game. Seven second chance points. Off the mark there. On the first possession of the fourth quarter. Lynchburg looking for their first conference win of the 2023 year. They did take down Hollins earlier in the season in mid-December, but since the calendar's turned, only played one, they fell to Guilford in a really close battle. It was a really good game here on LHSN on Wednesday evening. Lynchburg fell by one point. You know, you had Lindsey Galden, who's one of the best players in the conference. She dropped 30 on the Hornets, and Lynchburg was still able to stay in it. And the big reason why was the 15 three-pointers the Hornets made, which, as we mentioned, is a program record for three-pointers made in a game. The previous high was 14. Lynchburg knocked down 14 trays in 2013 against Emory and Henry. Emory and Henry now, obviously, a, a team who's left the ODAC, who uh, we all came to grow and love from uh, Western Virginia, right near Tennessee. They've moved on to the SAC, the South Atlantic Conference in Division II. Joe Matthews, a good friend in the SID industry. The SID over there at Emory and Henry. Mark Robertson, the SID here at Lynchburg, a graduate from Emory and Henry. First two substitutions of the second, of the fourth quarter, excuse me. Olivia Harris in for Lynchburg. She's the leading scorer on the day for the Hornets. And Karis Lucas, she's got 11 for EMU, was the leading scorer for the Royals until recently when Hamlet took over with her 12. That's just about her, her season average. She averages 12.8 a game. Washington to Lucas in the corner. It's nice to see the, uh, the way that EMU is really active when they pick up their dribble. They always make that fake bounce pass looking for every option, you know, just keep the defense on their toes. As Harris drives in on the left side. She catches it on the offensive rebound inbounds. I'd probably credit that one to Spainauer. Kicked out to Kaysen. No deal. Pass almost picked off by Spainauer. That leaves Moore open in the corner. Good help defense from the backside from Sledge. And then even better help defense from Kaysen who comes in and picks up the loose ball. Good job there defensively on the rotation from the Hornets. And then a quick two on the other end. Maddie Nimmo. Eight point advantage now for the Hornets. Again, we haven't seen this one get extended to 10 points. So this game's really never been out of out of hand for EMU. Washington tries the three, a little strong. Sledge, nice attempt at the one-handed rebound as Lucas was trying to box her out, but Kaysen corrals it. Kaysen, she's got 10 now. As she's made three three-pointers, it's the try four. Can't get it, offensive rebound Harris. She's going to the line for two. So Brooke Kaysen, she's a freshman from Fishersville, Virginia. Played her ball at Wilson Memorial as we get an, another look at Olivia Harris at, trying to clean up the offensive glass. But with that last bucket from Kaysen, she's now reached a new season high on her young career. Previously had eight at Lynchburg's last ODAC victory at Hollins on December 7th, but here in her first year, her first time in double figures. Olivia Harris, on the other hand, very familiar, uh, you know, carrying the load for a Lynchburg offense. 
Scored 22 last game. She had 24 earlier in the year. She misses the second free throw there, but Darcy Ross cleans up. Offensive board. So while at the beginning of the game, the, sto the, the story of the contest was the turnovers. Seven turnovers in the first quarter from EMU, six from the Hornets. But now, I really, what I think is making a big difference here is the offensive rebounding, frankly, on both ends of the court. As Spainauer is fouled on, her, on the floor on her way to the bucket, so this one's going to be restarted underneath the rim. Kayla Terry will do the honors. Usually Maddie Nimmo is the predominant inbounder for Lynchburg. Such a crafty player, a lot of assists. She does a great job of finding the open player on those set pieces on the out-of-bounds play. Darcy Ross, spin move, finds Harris. Harris drives in again on the left side and spins it off the rim for two. Nice move from Harris. She's been trying to make her way to the rim from that left side driving in here in the second half, and this time she is able to convert. Had been fouled on those previous attempts, but this time does it the easy way. Spinning the ball off the glass with the right hand. But now Harris will be called for the foul. Six minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Fouls may start to be an issue as Harris has three. Look to Nichol Coach Allison Nichols, and she's not going to take her leading score off the court. Two fouls apiece here in the fourth quarter for both teams. So as things wind down, we may see a free throw battle if things get into the bonus. In the meantime, Carey sinks one from the stripe. Carey is four for five now from the free throw line. Olivia Harris, she's got 13. She made three or four from the free throw line as well. She's the leading scorer for the Hornets here. Carey is keeping EMU in this one as she brings things back under double digits with those two free throws. Harris on the left side, a lot of success there. Mullins, a lot of success from downtown as well. Can't connect. How about another offensive rebound? Bree Spainauer with her eighth board of the game. Harris for three. Just off. Harris, good job of getting back on defense as Tiffany Carey is a one on one. Rebound by Ross. Good job by Harris there in transition as Carey was looking to was looking to run quickly after the missed three pointer. But Harris's tenacity and hustle on defense uh, was able to deny Carey. And now on the other end of the floor, she's rewarded. Terry found her on that nice pass and just couldn't finish from the right side. And nevertheless, Harris will take her fifth and sixth free throws of the day. Hasn't made one from deep yet, but she's still able to manufacture a game high 13 points so far. And that's combined with four free throws now and five makes from the floor. She's been really doing her damage driving to the rim. We've seen that a lot out of her today. It's been fun to watch. When you have players like Terry who made the pass there, pass leading to the foul, and also, of course, you know, Maddie Nimmo, who's got two assists on the day. You're going to have a lot of success if you're Harris, if you're, gonna, if you're willing to move without the ball, try to see if, you can, if those passers can find you cutting. As we get a look at Jenny Posey here in her fifth season as her team faces an 11 point deficit. It's the biggest lead of the game so far for Posey and the Royals. They'll talk things over there. We'll give them a chance to do it in private as we'll go to break and be back for the last five and a half minutes of this one on LHSN.
Five minutes to go here on Wayne Profit Court. Lynchburg leads by 11 over the visiting Eastern Mennonite Royals in some big ODAC action. Also getting underway in the ODAC will be the men. Today at 4.30, they're going to be in Bridgewater for a big contest against the Eagles. Lynchburg beat Bridgewater at home last season, looking to take them down on the road now. And the next home game for Lynchburg men's basketball will be against Randolph-Macon, one of the top teams in the country and the reigning national champions. It's going to be must-see TV next Saturday, 2 o'clock here on LHSN. I even might be calling it with you. Be a good time. But now back to the task at hand. There's five minutes to go here in the fourth quarter, and the Hornets have built their biggest lead. And they've done it as of late from the free throw line. Brooke Kaysen has knocked down a couple of threes. Kayla Terry started the game with hot shooting. Kaysen gets the offensive board. That's the big one, though. The offensive rebounding for Lynchburg has been fantastic. They're going to have 10 seconds here. Mullins is going to try to run a play. She's going to get the screen, switch on the screen, finds Ross, and a quick jumper there. Really nice job on the pick and roll. Darcy Ross sees the EMU defender going over the screen, and she just sinks down a little bit, and she's going to be wide open for that little jumper. Really nice piece there from Darcy Ross and Macy Mullins. Ross on the other end defends Glimpf. Glimpf tries to pickpocket Spainauer. She's forced to pick up her dribble, but no harm, no foul here as Mullins will run another play. They're going to run the same one. This time, doesn't use the screen Mullins, tries to drive on the right side, and cross-court pass to Terry for the foul on the floor first. Foul's on Jada Jones. So... That foul is going to lead to the media timeout. And we'll take the media timeout with them. We'll be back in a little bit here on LHSN. Lynchburg leads by 13. At Lynchburg, we don't fear change. We embrace it in our students, on our campus, in our community, and around the world. We're building on our legacy of always moving forward. It's the same place. Back here on Wayne Profit Court, Tim LaDuca with you. As Lynchburg holds on to a 13-point lead, they've built their biggest lead of the afternoon here. And looking to take this win as momentum coming into their next coming games. Lynchburg is first going to take on Randolph-Macon on the road. And then they'll also visit Valwez, so a little road trip coming up for the Hornets before they return home to take on Farum. But the task at hand right now is to polish off the rest of this three and a half minutes of play. And they're nursing a 13 point lead. Nimmo heavily guarded by two players up at the timeline. She's able to sneak through, get to the rim, and draw the foul from Glimp. So that will be the fifth foul on the Royals this quarter. That means we will be shooting free throws the rest of the way here. Big contact there between Nimmo and Glimp, both wearing number 13 for their teams. Nimmo's having a good day. She's got 10 points. And she makes her first free throw. As I said, there's the upcoming schedule. Randolph Macon's going to be a tough one. The Yellow Jackets are in fourth place in the conference. Vawes on the road. Then we'll see Farum here on LHSN on the 18th, 7 o'clock. 
Students won't even be back yet for that one, though. We really miss our students here on campus and at LHSN. Excited to have them back when the spring semester starts in the spring on the 25th. Nimmo's got 12 points. She's one away from her career high as a first year. She scored 13 points against NC Wesleyan. Offensive board there for EMU. Finds the cutting Hamlet. And Hamlet's going to go to the line to shoot a pair. So it was Glimpf who had just got called for the foul on the other end, finds the cutting Hamlet, and Darcy Ross gets called for the foul. Her first, team's third. Maya Hamlet. We're going to talk about homecoming games. How about Lynchburg, Virginia native and an EC Glass graduate? Maya Hamlet, she's a sophomore from the Hill City. It's always fun to see some EC Glass products coming, playing back here in their hometown. And EMU even donning the same colors as the Hilltoppers with that blue. Hamlet knocks down both of them. And the full court press is on. Here with three minutes to go. And a 13 point lead for Lynchburg. Nimmo, she's in trouble. Dribbled it off her foot, going the other way. So just the turnover on Nimmo, but you can credit the steal if you'd like to, if you keep a score at home, but it's not gonna be an official steal to both Jada Jones and Tiffany Carey. We see Carey does a good job sealing off the, the sideline, and then as Nimmo tries to turn around, it was Carey who's there to stop her and, and just dribbles it off her foot. Going the other way. Gotta go fast though, because there's two and a half minutes to go here. Try the three pointer, Hamlet, yes indeed. Hamlet, that's her first three of the game. She's got 17 points now, so just jumping out of nowhere, Hamlet only had four points in the first half. Now she's all the way up to 17. Nimmo almost got herself in trouble again there in the corner, same place she turned it over the last time. And instead, Coach Allison Nichols saves the day with the timeout. Two and a half to go here, and Lynchburg leads by 10. So for the entire game, quarters one through three, Lynchburg never was able to extend the lead past double digits. It was nine a couple of times, but EMU hung in there. And here in the fourth quarter, Lynchburg has extended the lead to as many as 13. However, a three-pointer there from Hamlet brings it back to 10, and Lynchburg will have the side out here right in front of our press box here on Wayne Profit Court see what Jenny Posey can draw up as they'll try to get the steal here. And if it gets to a point where the Royals want to start fouling, they will be stopping the clock. With a foul, it'll instantly send them to the line for two free throws, so really not going to be too beneficial there. We'll see how things play out. The five players back onto the court for Lynchburg as they try to hold on to this lead will be Brooke Kaysen. She's got a career high points today with 10. Maddie Nimmo is out there. She's got 12. Livia Harris, leading scorer for Lynchburg on the day at 15. Then you also have Bree Spainauer, who's been cleaning up on the boards all afternoon long. She's got nine rebounds. And then Darcy Ross, who has found herself a good role here in the Lynchburg lineup. And she's out there in crunch time. Brooke Kaysen, deal. Brooke Kaysen. Another career, pushing her career high even further with 13 points there. And that's probably gonna be a dagger as the Hornets extend the lead. They've got 71 points here with two minutes to go. The timeout, it's only a 30 second timeout. So why don't we stay here? Take a look at it again, Olivia Harris finds Kaysen. Ball goes up and goes down. Number 24 is dealing here. I've been 
thinking in my head here how, what kind of puns I can do with the name Brooke Kaysen. Kaysen? You know, case in point, that, that would work. I wanted to do something like a little deal or no deal type of thing. Like Howie Mandel, what's in the case? Brooke case in for three, deal or no deal. <laughs> that might work, I'll workshop that. EMU now, this thing's starting to look bleak. Karis Lucas, she she's at 11 points and that's where she was at at the break. As a turnover here on the full court press. Tiffany Carey, now things get interesting. Hamlet, she'll try it. Yes, sir! Big three-pointer for Maya Hamlet. She's made her last two shots from downtown and it's a 10-point lead again. Uh-oh, Maddie Nimmo. She is going to foul on the loose ball, Lila Glimpf. Nimmo turned it over and she's gonna get charged for the blocking foul now. So things getting interesting here. I probably spoke a little too soon when I said that Kaysen's three-pointer was the dagger. As you see Carey get the steal there, she'll find Hamlet. Hamlet collects her 20th points of the afternoon. Moore, short iron, rebound. Kaysen had an opportunity to Go fast, but wisely slows things down. Here comes the double team. Nimmo gets it off to Ross. Spainauer, don't need to go too quick. There's still 15 on the shot clock. EMU guarding all the way out, and this time Nimmo draws the foul off of Tiffany Carey. And as we said, every foul from here on out for EMU will send the Hornets to the line. But Lynchburg now with four fouls after Nimmo got chart called for the block. Earlier on, uh, Lynchburg's at four fouls now, so EMU will also be shooting the rest of the way. So Nimmo with a chance to push things to 11. She can't on the first, but has a chance to do it on the second. Coming into the screen there. Karis Lucas was just talking to head coach Jenny Posey. We'll see what Lynchburg does after the make or miss. So Nimmo can't come up with either free throws. So there's a minute remaining here in the game. Going fast. Glimpf has it in front of her own bench. Carey. Now Hamlet driving in, kicks it out. Redfern, a little too strong. Big rebound there by Kaysen. Brooke Kaysen, she's got 13 points on the day, just brings in her fourth rebound there. It's a big one as the offensive rebounding for both teams have been pretty good. And I'd even say phenomenal. 14 offensive boards for EMU and 12 for Lynchburg. And Kaysen comes up with a big defensive board in that case. Sends Nimmo to the line on the other way as EMU fouls. So Nimmo now. She's got 13 points that matches her season high in her, in her first year. And how about that, 14. Two Hornets scoring career highs today as Nimmo has 14, Kaysen has 13, and gives us three Hornets in double figures. Minute left here, we'll go to break. Come back for the last minute of action here on LHSN.
we'll try to set the stage for you here for the last 49.3 seconds of action here on Wayne Profit Court. I'm Tim Luduka here on LHSN, and Lynchburg leads by 12 over EMU. EMU came into this game with a 7-6 record over 500 and with two conference wins under their belt. Lynchburg, on the other hand, only won ODAC W and two wins on the season in general. 30 seconds now, ball being swung around. Redfern tries one from deep and it's an air ball. EMU shooting 30% from beyond the arc. Really good day from the free throw line as well, nine of 10. Lynchburg similarly 81% from the free throw line is Maddie Nimmo going back for more. She's six for eight now from the free throw line. And that means six of her 15 points coming from the charity stripe. She sinks them both. And she extends on her career high here in her first year. Shot clock's turned off, 29 seconds left, a 14 point lead for the Hornets. Nimmo, as the EMU was trying to roll the ball up the court, almost poked it away. 20 seconds now, ball being swung around the perimeter. Carey steps into one from deep, off the back iron. Harris battling Nimmo, her own teammate, for the rebound. Nimmo comes up with it, and she's going to have the privilege of just dribbling this one out here on Wayne Profit Court. Some smiles on the faces of Nimmo even before. Oh wait, they got 2.2 seconds left. It's gonna be a turnover on Nimmo, that's unfortunate. She was just dribbling the ball, dribbling the rest of the game out and EMU poked it away. So an asterisk on the turnover total. As Lucas takes a three pointer at the end. She made three on the day. She had a good day from downtown. And Lynchburg can celebrate their first win of 2023. They do it at home against EMU. Final score, 75-61 here on LHSN. Maddie Nimmo with her prowess from the free throw line late in the game ends up as the game's leading scorer for the Hornets. She finishes with 16. She made a three pointer, four for five from the four, seven of nine from the free throw line and throw in two assists, two rebounds. Really good day there from the freshman point guard. Livia Harris, she does her normal thing, 15 points. Didn't make the three pointer, but it didn't matter. She was five for six from the free throw line, five for 11 from the floor. And Brooke Kaysen also getting a career high. She finishes with 13. She made four three pointers. On the other side of the ball, EMU, Maya Hamlet, she was the premier piece coming in. We had our eyes on. She got 20 points to lead the way. Karis Lucas comes off the bench and scores 11. All righty, folks. We don't have another game here on LHSN until next Saturday. It's Lynchburg men's basketball versus Randolph-Macon. We're taking attendance, so please be there. And we're excited to see the rest of the season, how things go for Lynchburg women's basketball. Good young group gets a win under their belt. Good for them, they deserve it. EMU came in and they're gonna leave at seven and seven. They're having a good season being coached by Jenny Posey. A lot of talent on that side of the court as well. Okay, Jacksonville, Tennessee tonight. I think the Jaguars are going to win. Uh, that's gonna be a fun one to watch. That's what I'll be doing tonight. But before that, I'll be watching Lynchburg men's basketball against Bridgewater on the road. And that'll do it from Wayne Prophet Court in the Hill City on LHSN. <laughs>